The United Arab Emirates are building the largest solar power plant in the world. It will cover 90 square kilometers of desert and has an output of more than 5 gigawatts. Solar power plants in the desert can generate enormous amounts of energy. In fact, if we were to cover the entire Sahara with solar panels, we could theoretically supply four times the world's current electricity demand. However, it is not that simple. Studies show that massive solar farms in deserts could have serious impact on the global climate. And that's just one of several problems. So today we are taking a closer look. How much potential do these large-scale desert solar projects really have and what are the risks? And with that, welcome to the German Science Guy. I'm Dr. Jakob Potton and in Germany we say Los geht's. Solar systems need sunlight, no surprise here. The logic conclusion would therefore be we install them where they get the most sunlight. The best places with the highest solar potential can be seen in the global solar atlas. The regions are colored according to their photovoltaic output. The lighter or more greenish bluish in the map, the lower the output and the redder the higher it is. And if you look at the map, you can quickly see that the output and radiation are particularly high in desert regions. So let's see why exactly that is. Deserts are typically defined by the absence of rainfall, less than 25 centimeters per year. And not all is just sand. It can also be a rock, gravel, salt or ice desert. What they all have in common, they have very arid conditions. Many deserts are formed by what is known as the rain shadow effect of mountains. Moist air is blocked by mountain ranges. That means air masses release their moisture as they rise over mountain range and by the time they reach the other side, they are extremely dry. This rain shadow effect is one of the key processes behind the formation of deserts like the Atacama Desert, the Gobi Desert or the Moyaf Desert. Of course, there are other mechanisms as well. These give rise to continental deserts, coastal deserts or tropical deserts. Most of them are found around 23 degrees of latitude. The Sahara Desert is essentially a combination of all three and actually alternates between lush greenery and bone dry desert. This cycle is linked to Earth axial precision, a slow wobble in the planet's rotation that takes about 26,000 years. It influences global climate patterns, including the monsoon, for example. The last green phase of Sahara ended around 3,000 years to 4,000 years ago. Low humidity means fewer clouds and intense solar radiation. Another interesting fact, deserts have a high albedo up to 0.9 for ice deserts like Antarctica. That means 90% of the sunlight is reflected back into space. Sand deserts like the Sahara reflect back between 30 30 and 50 percent. That gives them a cooling effect on Earth's climate despite the heat at a ground level. Well, now let's come to solar power. Deserts offer some key advantages for solar power. As we already mentioned, solar radiation is especially intense, which means solar panels can generate a lot more energy than in other parts of the world. On the internet, you find some hypothetically calculations, like if we could convert all the solar radiation hitting the Sahara into electricity, it would be enough to supply Europe 7,000 times over. But unfortunately, solar panels can't use the entire spectrum of sunlight, only a part of it. So one must be careful with these kinds of simplified comparisons. There's also a controversial image that's been circulating online for a few years now. It shows a map of the Sahara Desert with three red squares, each one supposedly representing how little area would be needed to power Germany, Europe or the entire world with solar energy. This meme actually goes back to a 2005 diploma thesis and it's not entirely realistic. But still, it gives a strong visual impression of just how massive the potential of desert solar power really is. Realistically speaking, covering the entire Sahara Desert with solar panels could still generate enough electricity to meet global demand, not just once, but four times over. That's an enormous amount of power from a relatively small area. The land itself is another major advantage. Around one third of Earth's land surface is desert. These areas are often relatively flat, extremely dry and generally very challenging for housing and above all agriculture and industry. Of course a few expectations are there, like oil and gas production in the Algerian part of the Sahara. But mostly deserts are largely unused, at least so far. The United Arab Emirates have recognized these advantages for themselves and are now building the world's largest photovoltaic power plant. The UAE is located in the east of the Arabian Peninsula and has a dry desert climate throughout the country. Located near Abu Dhabi, in the middle of the desert, the project is led by the state-owned company Masta. 
The solar farm will cover an area of 90 square kilometers. That's roughly the size of the German island of Sylt, covered entirely in solar panels. The plant output will be 5.2 gigawatts and it will be paired with a massive energy storage facility holding 19 gigawatt hours of energy. Estimated costs are around 6 billion euros or 7 billion US dollars. The whole solar battery power plant is expected to go online in 2027. At the moment, China still holds a record for the largest solar power plant in the world. Last year, they opened a 3.5 gigawatt solar farm, also in the desert, but without any battery storage. This is part of China's long-term goal to become carbon neutral by 2060. Similarly, the UAE says the new Abu Dhabi project will help reduce the country's CO2 emissions. But is that really the full story? In January, Master CEO Mohamed Jamil Al-Ramahi gave an interview to the US broadcaster CNBC. He explained why the UAE is investing in this massive new photovoltaic power plant. Interestingly, he also mentioned the wildfires in Los Angeles, not in the context of climate change, but in connection with drought. That caught our attention. As a desert nation, the United Arab Emirates faced an extreme water shortage. In fact, about 10 years ago, water in the UAE was even more expensive than oil. To deal with this, the country has long relied on expensive desalination plants for seawater. They've also been experimenting with cloud seeding, trying to artificially trigger rainfall. But why does this matter here? Well, in 2024, a German study found that urban-scale photovoltaic solar parks can influence weather patterns. By coincidence, this case study focused on the UAE and was funded by the UAE government. So what did the study find? PV modules are typically much darker than desert sand, which normally reflects 30 to 50 percent. Solar panels, on the other hand, absorb more heat, causing the air above them to warm up. That creates updrafts above the modules. Warm air rises and when it meets the sea breeze from the Persian Gulf, the two air masses mix with each other. The idea is that this warm, moist air can form clouds and eventually cause rainfall. And this raises a question. Is this massive solar park just about clean energy or is it also a new experiment in geoengineering? We will talk about this now in our part where we look at the critical points of new inventions. Before that, you can quickly subscribe and activate the bell so that you never miss a video again and also support this channel. All right, so there's a bit of relief here. While it's true that a 90 square kilometer solar power plant could have an impact on local weather, the effect would be extremely small. In the German study mentioned earlier, researchers investigated several installation sizes. 100 square kilometers, 400, 900, 1,600 and 2,500. So the closest scenario to the actual UAE project is 100 square kilometers. And according to the simulated model, there was indeed one day during the year where more water formed in the atmosphere, about 400,000 cubic meters. That may sound like a lot at first, but spread across the land area of the entire UAE, that's equivalent to just 0.0048 millimeters of rainfall. Over the full year, the study concludes that the overall effect is very small. For there to be noticeable weather changes, the solar farm would need to cover at least 400 square kilometers. But we're still a long way from that, nor is such a scale expected anytime soon. But what if we build much larger solar parks covering thousands of square kilometers, like those envisioned for the Sahara Desert? Scientists have actually been studying this scenario for several years now. Here in Europe, the Sahara is especially relevant. It's the largest desert in the world and it's relatively close Close to us. The climate consequences of building a giant solar park in the Sahara would be dramatic. Because solar panels reflect much less sunlight than desert sand, the surface temperature in the Sahara would increase by up to 1.28 degrees Celsius. This warming leads to lower air pressure, raising air currents, more cloud formation and ultimately more rainfall, up to 50% more. With this added rainfall, vegetation starts to grow, which further amplifies the process. Plants absorb more sunlight, increase local humidity and trigger what's called a positive precipitation vegetation feedback loop. In short, more plants, more heat absorption, more rain. The impact of these solar panels wouldn't stop at the Sahara. They could influence the climate of the entire planet. But again, we're really only talking about extremely large-scale solar farms covering thousands of square kilometers, not the relatively modest 90 square kilometer project in the UAE. A 2024 study explored several of these large-scale solar farm scenarios. Their results are impressive. Even if we just cover 20% of the Sahara with solar panels, the regional consequences around the world would be dramatic. 
the global distribution of cloud cover could shift, the study concludes, changing where and when cloud formation happens all over the world. But let's be clear here, the global weather is extremely complex and it's sheer impossible to predict the exact consequences. But such changes we would clearly feel in Europe, in Southern and Central Europe, including countries like Germany, there would likely be more cloud cover. As a result, the annual solar power potential in many parts of Central Europe would decrease by around 4% just from covering 20% of the Sahara with PV panels. During the local summer month, that drop could be even more significant. North Africa would be hit even harder. Here, the solar potential could decline by over 8% in large areas. Other regions on Earth, on the other hand, could actually benefit. The study shows a slight increase in PV potential in parts of Scandinavia, especially in Sweden and Norway, and also Central America. These are some pretty dramatic consequences the study outlines. But let's take a step back. This is, after all, just one study. More research is definitely needed to confirm these findings. And like I said earlier, the global weather system is incredibly complex. It's extremely hard to predict exactly what will happen where and when, especially when you're dealing with systems on a global scale. And also, let's not forget, we are still a long way off from building anything on that kind of massive scale. So while the scenario is fascinating and maybe even a little worrying, it's still very much theoretical for now. And still, the study shows the global climate system is extremely sensitive and even small regional changes can have far-reaching global effects. Photovoltaic modules are not a bad thing itself. Desert just mostly have a high albedo. PV modules, on the other hand, not. They absorb much more heat. So when we cover more reflecting desert areas with black absorbing stuff, that will have consequences. Oh, and deserts come with challenges in general. Usually they are far away from infrastructure, they lack water for cooling, you get power losses due during long distance transmission and we're dealing with highly sensitive ecosystems. So what do you think? Should we leave the desert out of the equation or should we only use them for solar power in a limited careful way? Let me know your opinion in the comments and if you liked the video don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and with that thank you for watching, take care and see you soon, you're Jacob.